Fadwa Tukan was one of the best known female Palestinian poets who was born in 1917 and who died in 2003. Her literary career spanned seven decades and she was considered to be one of the best modern Arab poets, winning several international prizes for her work to the extent that she became known as the poet of Palestine. In this video, I would like to present an overview of Fadwa Tukan's life and work. This will provide evidence for my argument, which is that we should consider Fadwa Tukan to be a Mukhadrama poet of the modern age of Arabic poetry. According to Radwa Ashur, in order to understand modern Palestinian writers, we must first understand the modern history of the Levant. Fadwa Tukan was born in 1917, just a year after the Sykes-Picot Agreement of 1916 divided the Levant towards the end of the First World War. The Levant, which had been part of one Islamic nation for 1200 years, was divided up between Britain and France into two territories. At the same time, the 1917 Balfour Declaration supported Jewish settlement and a future Zionist state in Palestine. This was contrary to a previous promise to the Arabs of an independent Arab state in return for the Arabs fighting the Ottoman Empire in the Great Arab Revolt of 1916. Fadwa Tukan was born in the West Bank town of Nablus into one of Nablus's most affluent, conservative and educated families. She was the seventh child out of ten children. Her brother Ibrahim was a well-known Palestinian poet and radio broadcaster. Her brother Ahmad went on to become a Prime Minister of Jordan in 1970. According to her autobiography, Fadwa Tukan had an unusually rigid and conservative upbringing. When she was 13, a boy at school gave her a flower. When her older brother Yusuf found out, the family decided that she should no longer be allowed to go to school out of concern for her own well-being. She describes the subsequent years at home as a house arrest. Although she had limited formal education, Fadwa Tukan loved literature and reading. Her brother Ibrahim recognized this and he taught her poetry at home, starting with al Khansa, and he eventually taught her how to write classical Arabic poetry. Salam Mir says that from around 1933 to 1948, Fadwa Tukan wrote and published poems of a personal nature. Poems to do with her frustration at being trapped at home and being unable to leave the house. Poems reflecting her frustration at the inferior and subservient role of Palestinian women in Palestinian society at that time. She also wrote quite a few love poems. Right in the middle of this period, her brother Ibrahim, who was her mentor and who had taught her poetry, suddenly died in 1941. This had a major impact on Fadwa Tukan, and this is reflected in some of her elegiac poetry from this period. We have some examples of her early poetry. This is from her book, Wahadi Ma'a Al Ayam, which was published in 1952 and has some exemplar material from this early period in her life. For me, the most striking thing in this book is that this poem, and many others like it in this book, are written in the traditional amudi or vertical columnar form, with a very regular and measured structure where each bait or line consists of two shatters, hemistiches, and the ending of each bait maintains the same rhyme at least in each stanza. Looking at this poem takes me back 1400 years to the pre-Islamic Qasidas, for example from Imbul Qais, which are structurally very similar and in her autobiography 
Fatu Tokan says that she was taught to replicate exactly this early style of Arabic poetry. So that was in terms of style and structure. In terms of content and themes, we can look at the poem titled Al-Sha'ira wal farasha Hunaka fawka al-rabuwati al-aliyati Hunaka fi al-sa'ili al-sa'jiya Fatahtu ahlamin khayaliyatun Tasbihu fi ajwa'iha al-na'iya As-sumtu wa-dhillu wa-afkaruha rafakuha Wa-sarhatu al-haniya Hayatuha kasidatun thaddatun Man ba'awha al-hussu wa-niranuhu وَهَلْمٌ مُحَيَّرْ دَائِيَةٌ مِنْ كَلْكِ اللَّحَفَةِ أَلْوَانِهِ حَيَاتُهَا بَهَرٌ نَاءَ غَوْرُهُ وَإِنْ بَدَتْ لِلْأَيْنِ شَتَّانُهُ رَنَتْ فَتَاوٌ الشِّيرَ مع خُذَةٌ بِسُورِ التَّبَيَّعْتِ الْخَالِبَ وَالْأَفْقُ الْغَرْبِيُ تَطْفُو بِهِ أَلْوَانُهُ الْوَرْدِيَةُ اللاهبة كأنه أرض خرافية حوت إليها شمسه الغاربة. This is an example of an early poem by Fadba Tukan, and as mentioned before, it's almost autobiographical in nature. Also, I can't help but wonder whether the butterfly motif is a nod to Western poets such as Wordsworth, who, for example, a hundred years before, wrote two poems about butterflies. It's almost as if Fadwa Tukan is trying to say and trying to demonstrate that she has studied Western literature as well as Arabic literature. The next major influence on Fadwa Tukan was the declaration of the State of Israel in May 1948, the annexation of the West Bank and her hometown of Nablus to the Kingdom of Jordan, the subsequent Arab-Israeli war and the resulting dispersal of Palestinians. Radwa Ashwa states that the Nakba was a pivotal event in Palestinian art and literature. For Fadwa Tukan, 1948 was also the year in which her father died. These two events, ironically, gave Fadwa Tukan a sense of liberation. That breakdown in society and traditional order meant that she was released for the first time from the shackles which had tied her down. She wrote in her autobiography, When the roof fell on Palestine, the veil fell off the face of the Nablus woman. These seismic changes in Palestine greatly affected the themes of Fadwa Tukan's work over the next 10 to 15 years. During this time, we also see a marked change in her style of writing as well. In her autobiography, Fadda Tukan says, And she singles out the period from Earth Tisamiya 33 to Earth Tisamiya 40, where she particularly followed the traditional style of writing poetry. However, something changed after that. And she says, and she mentions the names of a number of poets who influenced her to the extent that she says, من هنا بدأت أدير دهري للدباجة العباسية اقتنعت بكسيدة التفاعلة And from then on, she focused on writing in a shi'ar al-hur, free verse. The period 1950 to 1965 was marked by a great deal of experimentation and exposure to modern styles such as free verse. Fadwa Tukan also travelled to Europe as well as spending two years studying in the UK in the early 60s. We can sense in a poem like Wujud, which came early in this period and was an energy for her brother Ibrahim, a desire to almost break every rule in the Arabic poetry rulebook in an attempt to convey her thoughts and feelings better. Whereas in a poem like Wala She Yabka, which came around 1965 after her visit to the UK, arguably a more mature, structured, considered form of free verse is evident. The 1967 defeat in the Six-Day War, Naqsa, resulted in direct Israeli occupation of the West Bank, including Fadda Tukan's hometown of Nablus. Now mature in free verse, 
her poetry, which was previously individualistic in nature, now acquired a more collective, nationalistic tone. Previous themes such as romance gave way to new themes such as resistance, identity, and survival. In the poem Madinati al Hazina, Fadwa Tukan describes Yom al Ihtilal al Suhuniya as Yom Ra'ina al Maut wa Khiyana. It was a day when the Ramada Raja wa Ihtanakt bi Khassa al Bila'a Madinati al Hazina al Sumt kal Jibal Rabid kal Layl Ghamid al Sumt Fajia Muhammad bi Wata' al Maut wa Bil Hazmiya. In one poem, she compares the occupation to the plague when she talks about Yom Fasha al Ta'un fi Madinati. In one poem, she declared solidarity with the freedom fighters, saying, Fatah Anna, Anna Jabha, Anna Asifa. Fadl Tukan was a prolific writer, and even at the time of her death in 2003, aged 86, she was still writing and she was still learning new styles of poetry and learning new techniques and still trying to improve. In the poem Wahasha, Fadwa Tukan describes her feelings of loneliness at the end of her life. What's remarkable here is that she is using the most modern form of Arabic poetry, a Sher al-Manthur, or prose poetry, and using it in a very masterful way. Rakda al-Waqt wa khalafni wahdi ma'adhilli fi yaddar la ab la um la ikhwa la ikhwat tam la'a yadhakat ad-dar la shay siwa al-wahasha wa al-gham akhsha ukhad akhsha al-majhul al-a'ti min al-ghayb al-aqtar rabbi la taj'alni ibn tanbiduhu kull al-ajal antadhiru waluhi ard al-sum antadhiru al-mawt ta'alat darbi ya rabbi kassirha wa ikhthasir al-mishwar The term Mukhadram refers to any poet who lived in the Jahaliya period before Islam and who also lived in the Islamic period. We also have the term Mukhadramatul Dawlatayn, which refers to any poet who lived in the Umayyad times as well as living in the Abbasid times. No one really knows the true derivation of the word Mukhadram. It can mean a person who knew the pre-Islamic practices as well as knowing the Islamic practices. It can mean somebody who practiced the pre-Islamic things as well as the Islamic things. It can mean somebody who was very experienced in both the pre-Islamic practices and the Islamic practices. Fadwa Tukan was born in British Palestine. She became Jordanian in 1948. In 1967, she lived under Israeli rule. By the time she died, she was a subject of the Palestinian National Authority. All this while always living in her hometown of Nablus. When she was taken out of school, Fadl Tukan was destined to remain illiterate. However, within a few years, she became a published expert in the ancient Qasida type of Arabic poetry. In the 1940s and 50s, she moved on to free verse. And at some point after that, she moved on to prose poetry, mastering all of these genres. According to Radwa Ashur, Fadwa Tukan spanned three generations of Arabic poetry. Firstly, her own generation with the Qasida type of poetry. Then the generation after her with free verse. Then the generation after that with prose poetry. We've seen all three types of poetry in this presentation, and we've also seen extracts from her autobiography. Mukhadram poets are notable because they spanned two epochs, and that must have had an impact on their poetry. How about Fadwa Dukan? She went through as much upheaval in her life as any Mukhadram poet did, and she lived through three generations three epochs of Arabic poetry 
becoming a master in all of them during her time. That's why I think she is as qualified as any Mukaddam poet. And that's why I think she deserves the same respect and dignity and status as any Mukhadram poet does. Because of this, in this video, I refer to her as a Mukhadrama poet of the modern age of Arabic poetry. <laughs>